All right, everyone, so on today's class, uh, we're going to do a continuation of what we were looking at last time with our um, Amazon developer account. Um, I'm going to log back into it. If you did create that account, you want to log into it too. And also, just to get a show of hands, how many of you have managed to create that account like I did last time also? A few of you, okay. So you, if you did create one, you want to log in. Remember the address is developer.amazon.com. That's the portal where we're going to log in to upload our app, distribute our app, check on our stats, see all the money we're making, how rich we're getting. Um, so developer.amazon.com under the Amazon App Store. You can click there, and then you can log in at the top right. So I'm going to log in because there's still things I we need to do to continue to set up our store. We're at the point uh, where we finished last time. We we created this account. We filled in some of the information for the. Um, the basic listing for our company and such. And I started to create the listing for my app. Uh, so here on the dashboard, once I've signed in, that's what I see, that I've got my app. I don't have any stats yet because it's not, it's not uh, published yet. So I can go back in to click that app, and I'll go back to continue to edit its listing and remember we were going through the uh, each tab to fill in each tab some of them just required a confirmation and such and uh, the one I still need is images and multimedia so we saw here it was very cool it was detailed in that I could target my app to only be sold on specific territories I if I was monetizing my app I could sell it for a variety of prices in a variety of uh, currencies um, I uploaded my binary, which is the APK file that we created through Eclipse, through that, uh, through that wizard. And where we left off was the section of images and multimedia. So here there's a variety of images that we're going to create. Even if you didn't um, make your Amazon account, we, we need to have these... Uh, these assets because we would want them, we would use them also uh, on the Google Play account. And they all pretty much match up. Every file we use here, we would also use on Google Play. So I'm going to make a, a list of some of these uh, because we're going to create them. So if you want to see them yourself, they're in the Images and Multimedia tab of your app. Uh, I need a small icon, 114 pixels squared large icon which is 512 squared uh, I've got here screenshots between 3 and 10 so the more that I show the better because then people can get a preview of what my app looks like and I have a variety of sizes that I can upload uh, the smallest one that they accept is 800 by 480 uh, so that would be like the the smaller the lower end device and then all the way up to uh, 25, uh, 2560 by 1600 so very high high end device so I'm gonna make a, a few a note of a few of those because I need to check depending on your device we're gonna create screenshots of our app via Eclipse we can either do it by taking a screenshot of the of the actual device so I don't remember the resolution of my device. I'll take a few screenshots of that. You might have a tablet. We could do it for that as well. If you don't have a real device, we can just use a virtual device. But we have to confirm that our virtual device's dimensions are one of these. I'm going to write a few of these. Uh, probably just the first three ones. 800 by 480, 1024 by 600, and 1280 by 720. I, I highly doubt my real device is, is HD screen quality, so I won't bother with that one. But I could make one of those virtual devices in Eclipse. 
And let's see, Amazon Fire TV screen. Notice that this one is optional. It doesn't have the, the red asterisk on it. So the Amazon Fire TV screenshot is optional, and I didn't even design my app for that anyway. But it does seem that many of these dimensions, or if not all of them, are the same as that. So as long as I've covered uh, the screenshots up here, it should cover the, the TV screenshots too. Promotional image. This one's recommended, not required, but it's recommended. That one's 1024 by 500. Videos. I'll make a note of it, but we probably won't make one of these since that requires much more effort. Uh, but this can be in just about any format. WMV, MOV, FLV, AVI. And it could be 720p or 1080p. So all I'm doing here is making a note of this stuff, and now to actually create these icons, these screenshots and such, in um, in uh, in Eclipse, we'll go back to Eclipse. We'll uh, we'll run our app either on our real device or virtual device, and then we'll load up the screenshot, the screenshot creator. So let's go back to Eclipse. I'm running my app on both the virtual device and my real device. So make sure you're running an app on a device. And then we're going to switch our perspective. Remember, we're, we've been currently looking at this Java perspective 99% of the time, where we're looking at the files of our project, where we're editing the files of our project, and we need to switch over to the other perspective where we can see the app running on the device. Remember, we go over to the Window menu, Open Perspective, DDMS. So this is in Eclipse, Window menu, Open Perspective, DDMS. So then in my case, on the left side over here, it shows I've got my AVD, my, my emulated device, and my real device. <coughs> and I'll do this for both, if you've got a real or, or virtual, but I'm going to try this on my real one first. So notice your real devices look like a little phone, and your virtual devices look like a device in a screen. So if you click on any of the devices once, so I'm going to select the real device, and then you've got a, a row of icons at the top here, and one of them is a little camera, screen capture. So click that. You get a brand new screen, device screen capture that pops up, and this is exactly what your device is showing. Now, it's not dynamic, it's not live, so I can't you know, switch over to another screen, and it doesn't automatically change here. I have to click on top, refresh. So remember, Amazon is telling us 3 to 10 screenshots, 3 to 10 screens that represent what your app is about. Um, so it's up to you what you can do, but perhaps the most compelling parts of the app. Maybe I want to show off this home screen. Uh, for me, my, my screen is small, so it cuts off, but it will save the whole the whole thing. So I'm going to get a screenshot of my front screen. Actually, what I want to do is get a screenshot of the home screen with my name. Remember, we've got that customization that it's going to have people's name. So actually, I'm going to take a moment to go in and on my app and um, go to the part about customization to add my name. Do that and then refresh here. There we go. So that's what I want to show off on Amazon. I want to show that it's, that's, that it's been customized. So once I get uh, this home screen, I'm going to um, select 
at the top save and that will want to save a PNG file, a ping file, with the date and time and all of that. I'm going to save it on my desktop. Actually, maybe I'll make a, a folder on the desktop called uh, Store Assets. So I'm going to go to the desktop, create this folder, Store Assets, because in here I'll, I'll, I'll put all my screenshots. If I make a video, put it there, uh, my icons and such. I'll put them all in there, so store assets. You can leave the name as is, but I'm going to change it slightly to say screen screenshot dash device whatever. I'm going to save that, and I'm going to go to the desktop just to see my result. I went to the desktop where I, cha where I saved that item to the store assets, and if you click once on the picture you created, it'll tell you at the bottom, well, mine is 480 by 800. That's the minimum size that Amazon wants. So I'll make a note of that, that my device is 480 by 800. You want to check yours, but I made one screenshot at least. Did everyone find that? Anyone need some help making your screenshot? Question over there? Okay, let me help you out there. So you want to make a screenshot at least one, at least three, I would say, actually. We'll make it bigger in a moment. Well, remember, if you want to go back to your job, yeah, you only see the result in PDF. So they can just look at Just click yes on it because it still remembers your old version of the app. So just click yes to so remove it and put the new version. It's now switched back to the computer mouse. Yeah, that's fine. And then I'm going to go to a couple of other screens, and you should then save a couple more screens. Thank you. 
All right, so I'm going to see here what other screens in my app might be interesting to to show off. Um, you know, I could go into my my classes where I'm where I'm tracking classes and fill it in with some real detail. So 
so that I can take a screenshot of of a fully realized class so something like this if I if I refresh my screen at this point I can see that I have well it cuts off on my screen here but at the bottom I've, I've actually added in a class Right, I went through this through the sheet here and then added the class and it's part of the um, the database so basically anything that can show up on your on your device you can take a screenshot of it So here I, I'm, I'm kind of starting to fill out another class. And at the bottom, it shows a class that's already there. So I'm going to save that one. So now I've got this screenshot that I did a moment ago. And then I've got this screenshot that I just did where it shows a little bit of action, perhaps, filling out a new, a new class. And there's already one in there. That might be a good screenshot to create. The app, remember, also has uh, the ability to, to do the, the map feature. So let's see if the map wants to behave at the moment well, I want, when I want to create a screenshot of it. Okay, good. So it did load up here. I'm going to see what happens if I create... So here I, I went into the screen where I can use the map and it just basically tells me to take a U-turn. Uh, but that'll look good, I think, if I make a screenshot of that too. Is that off your regular device? Though? Yeah. We can't get on that. On the virtual device? Yeah, it seems a few people, few, few people didn't, so maybe uh, just a different screen. Maybe it would be interesting that I get a screenshot that looks a little like this, where I'm showing the map and then at the same time the directions. Now I'm a little limited because my device is saving screenshots of this dimension, 480 by 800. But I could create a virtual device, you know, that's a 7-inch screen, and I could run my app on the virtual device and invoke the, the screenshot capture device as well. And then I, I would be getting a much larger screenshot to show more of my screen real estate. So this one here, I've activated my virtual device and gone to the screenshots, and I can take these screenshots.
I'm going to get a screenshot over here of the computer's screen where it shows a little bit more content. I'll save that one too. Okay, I've got four screenshots that I like. All right, so did everyone get a few screenshots saved? Again, what we what this part of the process is we're creating we we have to adhere to judging a book by its cover, unfortunately, which is we might have a great app, but if the graphics don't look very professional or if the store listing doesn't look very professional, people might not download it. So we'll be addressing those things in this and the next class in that, well, we've got an app, it works pretty well, uh, it does what I want at this point, but I need to then get it ready for consumption. So we need to do some of this stuff, screenshots and such. And this again is when I, when I started to talk about in the beginning of this course two weeks ago, about a lot of us might have an experience or a comfort level of opening up you know, a code editor and writing some code and you can handle it. But then don't open up a graphics program. I don't know what to do in that. And that's fine. Uh, but of course it helps if you can do a little bit of both. So that's what we're doing. We're doing the graphic aspect of things. So I'll show you a couple of, of things you can do here. Uh, for example, let's say I've got a screenshot that is um, very large or, or I want to edit it a little bit. If you're on Windows, we have a built-in uh, very simple graphics editor. Has anyone ever heard of Microsoft Paint? So very simple graphics editor, but it might let us do what we want here. So let's check that out for a moment. Uh, let's say I've got a screenshot that I might want to edit a little bit, either resizing it, like making it larger or smaller, or maybe fudging out my home address. I don't want people to see that. So it's limited, but it can do what we want. And actually, I pull it up every once in a while, more than you would think, instead of loading up Photoshop. I've got Photoshop, but sometimes I just open up Paint to make some changes. And it's built into Windows, so let's try this if you'd like. I've got a screenshot here in my folder. You can right-click, and oftentimes it'll work simply just to select right-click Edit, and usually Edit will take you directly to Paint. Let's see if that works for you. So right-click your photo and select Edit. What should happen is you should have Microsoft Paint. You see the little Paint icon at the top left? Did that work for everyone? You've got Microsoft Paint. Paint has been around a while, and what we can do here is, let's say we've got our screenshot and we want to make a quick, simple edit, like let's say mine shows at the top here, um, my status bar at the top, but maybe there's something I don't want to show. Um, you know, we have an eraser that doesn't, that's not going to do exactly what you think because if we start to erase something, it'll just make it white. But you can erase, in a sense, we're going to be erasing, but we can replace a color with another color. That's what we've got at the top here color one, color two. When I'm erasing, it's going to show the background color, which is color two, which in my case is white. If I click color two and select pink, and go to the eraser and erase, well, it's going to quote-unquote erase to pink. That's not going to work either. But I can use the, the eyedropper here to pick a color, like this background color. 
uh, left click selects color one, my foreground color, and then right click with the ink uh, with the color picker selects my background color. So now I have the color that's behind the element, and now I can erase it, and it looks like you know it wasn't there. So that's useful. Again, let's say you've got a notification at the top from your sweetheart, and you don't want that to show up on your app that's going to go out to Amazon. You can go in and edit it a little bit in, in Paint. It gets the job done enough. So that's my trick. You can use the eraser, but probably you first want to select the color picker and then right-click the color you're trying to capture so that when you erase, it's exactly the background color. You can do other things in paint very simply. You can add a few shapes and such. Maybe if you get like the arrow tool. Or the arrow shape. And then a color, you can you know, make some simple shapes. Just to show, call attention to, your, to parts of your screenshot. You can draw directly on it with the brush tool. You've got different sizes. We have undo or control Z at the top left. So what I use paint for is to, to load things up, make quick edits with the with the brush or the eraser. Uh, what you can also do, it wouldn't make much sense to do it here, but what you could do is you've got this select tool where you can make a box and then click this crop button and it cuts out everything outside of the box. Obviously now I've got a screenshot that's too small to be usable, but if you're using this for, for example, what I like to use it for is, is you know, to make screenshots of the whole screen with print screen on the keyboard. And then in Paint, I can paste my screenshot. So here I captured the whole Windows screen, pasted it, and then I can go in and, and edit it, you know, crop it and all of that. What might also be useful is right at the top here, resize. This is how you can take a small picture, make it larger, or better yet, a large picture and make it smaller. Because this is one of the things that I have to caution you about, because I've worked in both the, the graphic aspect of things and the programming aspect of things, where uh, in, in, in computer graphics, whenever you have a small picture, and you try to resize it to make it larger, you're going to lose quality. Because this picture has a finite amount of pixels, or dots. You know, I can click here to zoom in, and I can see every dot. These are the dots that make up the letter C. There's a white dot, and then a slightly green dot, and a slightly more green dot, and an even greener dot, and then a green dot. And then blending happens because of those dots. There are right here. There's one, two, three, four, five. Five levels of color. And there's a finite amount of pixels in my, in my document. Remember, it's 480 by 800. If I multiply those together, it'll tell me exactly the number of pixels in this document. The point of that is that if I were to resize this two times larger, you know, 960 by 1600, it would have to invent dots. Instead of five dots, between those items, 
it would have to make you know two times more or four times more, whatever the ratio is. It would have to invent dots in between, and that's how images lose quality. If you start off with a with a finite amount of dots and resize, make it larger, it's going to invent dots and get more blurry. So really, what you only want to use resize for is to downsize. Notice under the resize screen, if we take a look at it, we can skew it or resize it, percentages or pixels. Let's say I change this to pixels, which says 480 by 800, and I saw over here on Amazon that they want a size of 1280 by 720, or 720 by 1280. So I'm going to put 720 here, and notice that resizes to then 1200, so I'm missing 80 pixels. Um, you don't have to do this, but as I do this and click OK, then it resized it, and now I'm starting to see what exactly what I'm telling you. This is not as sharp as it used to be a moment ago. This is a fuzzier circle than it was. If I go back, see that circle is much sharper. If I do it again, it's blurrier. So this is my problem. And I don't recommend to, to take a smaller graphic and resize it to a larger graphic. What you can do is the opposite, which is downsize. So let's say I was at 100% dimensions, and I say, well, I need this to be 75% smaller. In other words, you can do it by percent or by pixels. And if I resize it down to 75, it's still pretty sharp, because now the opposite happens. You've got you know, a thousand pixels to work with, you resize it down to 75, uh, 750 pixels, the computer can much easier throw away the pixels not necessary to make a smooth transition. It's got pixels to work with and therefore it can throw away. When you've got a smaller image into a larger image, it has to invent pixels. And a lot of times the result is very blurry. So if I go back to the original, the text is pretty sharp. Here's the downsized one, it's still pretty sharp. So that's the big secret in, in, in computer graphics. If you're going to resize any graphic, don't go from small to big. From big to small often gives you better results. Do you ever come across in the real world where you see some sort of poster or, or banner or something and you get kind of close and it looks really blurry and bad? Uh, I've seen that recently at some store. No, actually, I remember I saw it at Sprouts when I was there recently. There was a poster about all of their breads and stuff. And like eight of the loaves of bread looked really nice and sharp, and one of them looked blurry. So their, their designer that made that poster got a low-quality version of that one bread and stuck it onto that poster, and it stuck out like a sore thumb because it was a low-quality image um, blown up to poster size, and you really saw the, the result. What determines the size that you get when you use um, the Eclipse when you take a photo? It's all determined on either your virtual device or your real device. My real device's screen is, is the 480 by 800, so that's what it gave me. But if I, cre if I go back to my AVD manager and create a device at 1280 by uh, 720, then that's what it'll capture. I found that my virtual device just gave a black screen. It, the, the virtual device showed the, the, uh, the screen properly, but uh, when I tried to do a screen capture of it, it gave me a black screen. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, part of that might be things are different on the Mac, perhaps? What you could also do is, let's say you're running your virtual device right on your you know, your desktop. You could always do the, the, the classic you know, screen capture that way. That's good. So here in my virtual devices, if you want, I can go in here. There's an 800 by 1280, uh, 1200 by 1920. I can create one of these virtual devices, run my app on that device, and then I can capture it in my DDMS. And that's how I can create the larger image. Uh, I start off with that larger size, which I can resize if I want, instead of uh, starting off with the smaller one, which is, what, 320 by 480 or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if we're starting with that size, a little too small. I would say we want to capture 
the larger size. So all we have to do is then create a virtual device that fits the bill, if your computer can handle it. And these should be able to. You should be able to use these larger uh, sized uh, devices to, to create the screenshots. I'm not going to because I'm running the projector and the video capture and all of that, but you probably could. So I'm going to say uh, I can move on, and uh, I've got these screenshots. I've still got my Amazon account open, so I'm going to upload these screenshots to my account here. So I'm back on editing my app, back on Amazon, and on this section of screenshots it says Upload Image, so I'll click that placeholder and I will go to the desktop where I've got my screenshots looks like I have to do it one at a time so I'll select the first one Oops, got logged out So it says I can do 3 to 10. I've got 4. I simply uploaded them. Here they are. That's what people will see as a preview before they download the app. I can rearrange them because that's how they'll be shown in the store listing. I can say, well, maybe I first want to show the home screen and then maybe this screen and then the map and then the customization. Oh, I'm sorry, the, the class saving. If I don't like the picture, of course, I can just remove it. I still got others to add, but I'm going to save at this point because it might log me out again. Or actually, I guess I do have to have them all at the same time. But I've got some screenshots to add. Um, hopefully, when we created our icons for, um, remember when we created the icons for the app, back then we used Pixlr, and we saved uh, a 512 sized copy of our of our app icon as well. Hopefully, you've got that saved. Um, mine is in the network folder. So I'm going to go retrieve that. Okay. So this is an app. Uh, this is an icon that I worked on. You know, we did the one in, in Pixlr together. And like I said, Pixlr is it, it's got its pros and cons. The biggest pro is that it's free, and that it's online. Um, but some of the cons are that it's not as powerful as something like full-featured Photoshop or Illustrator. So later on that day I went home and uh, I made this in, in Photoshop. So it's kind of got a little bit more of the style of, of the actual uh, Android um, you know, material design and all of that, uh, where it's got the flat colors and a little bit of the shadow and all of that. Actually, I think I focused more on the, on the previous generation. It's not full material design style. But uh, that's, for, that's for my app, and it's the 512 sized dimensions. 
you can you can do you can use your icon or if you want you can use my icon maybe we'll do that for a moment just again so I can show you a couple of other interesting things so let's do that actually go to the network drive I've got a folder in there that says new icons and splash screen and I've got the, uh, the I've got the final PNG file and then my work Photoshop file and we have Photoshop on these computers I believe so we'll play with Photoshop for just a bit uh, but go into the the network drive and open the new icons and splash screen folder and just get a copy of both of those graphics the ping file and the PSD file I'm gonna put them into my folder of my store assets So I can give you this actually if you still if you you know you everyone's making their own app but I can give you a copy of my graphic here and I'll show you how to edit it so you can customize it a little bit uh, so make a copy of that onto your your folder so copy them both once you copy it let's double click the Photoshop file the PSD file so we'll open it in Photoshop and, and see it I'll give you some some tips on a few edits you can make to my icon so you can customize it for yourself. So you should copy that Photoshop file and then just double click it. How many of you have ever used Photoshop before? A few people. So Photoshop industry standard, it's been out since 1990. Um, it's uh, very powerful out of our scope here but I'll show you a few tricks we can do with it so uh, when I open this up uh, okay because I made it in a newer version of Photoshop uh, CS6 we've got CS5 in here so I guess it's telling me telling us did you also get a pop-up that says something about extended like that this document contains unknown data which will be discarded to keep layers editable. Um, let's select, if you get a screen that looks like mine, select Keep Layers. Because this is the thing that's great about Photoshop compared to Paint, that you have layers where I can have um, like two sheet, these two sheets of paper, whatever's on this sheet of paper, uh, doesn't affect what's on the bottom sheet. You know, I have this top sheet on top of that. It doesn't affect it. They're separate items. And we saw some of that in Pixlr, didn't we? We might have had a shape, and if we put it on its own layer, we could still move it independent of other shapes. So Photoshop has that, of course. So on your screen here, if you don't see it on the right side, uh, you should see something that says Layers. If you click on that, it should open it up. And I've got, uh, I had two ideas here. Notice there's an I here on um, idea two, and it's showing the current, my current idea for the icon. So if you turn off the eyeball for idea two and turn on the eyeball for idea one, that was my other idea. So if you stick with idea 2 and open the folder, there's a little triangle next to the idea 2 folder. You can open that up. Here's all the pieces that went into making my, my icon. So I, at the very top, there's the pencil. You can hide that I item, and it's just the pencil shape. Then below that, you've got the pencil shadow. Below that, you've got the square that gives you the highlighted portion of the of the square. And then below that you've got the little shadow portion. I believe these should still be editable for you, so at the very least what you can do is change this to your own colors. You can change any of these colors by double-clicking that little color editor on the layer. 
So let's say I actually wanted a different color for this square. If you double click it, then just go in here and say, okay, actually I want red. And then it's up to you to be your the color, uh, you know, to be a color artist. The shadow's a little different. Instead of it being just a flat color, it's a gradient, which blends from that color to that color, which of course you can still edit. Actually, it kind of looks interesting like that. But uh, you can go in and, and make some edits. Or you can do this little trick here. Uh, I change the color of the squares down here, and I want to change those colors, but my trick is if you click on the layer so that it's highlighted and change the mode from normal to multiply, it will automatically blend the colors for you. So up here under normal, I go to multiply. And so the color is green, but then it blends it, that green with that background, and now it looks like I've got that shadow with the right color. And so you can take my icon and put your own colors onto it. You can do whatever you want with this icon, so if you know a little Photoshop, maybe play around with some other items and then maybe move things around, rotate, add a, a filter if you'd like, but again, that's out of our scope. At the very least, what you can do is go in and change some of these colors and maybe customize it for your own style. Or you can, of course, go in and instead of using idea 2, you can go in and open idea 1, and there's a few things you can change there, too. We'll give you a moment to play with that, and then we'll we'll save this as our 512 sized. Um, <coughs> what do they call it here? As our as our picture, that's the, the large icon, and then I'll show you to resize it down to the small icon. My my icon's already the 512 pixel size, but I'll show you how to resize it in Photoshop to get the uh, 114 sized. Uh, small icon. And we could also use it, we could repurpose it for the promotional image.
So we'll go on in just a moment, but a quick digression here. I was curious. I went to the college's catalog, um, and I wanted to see if any Photoshop courses are offered, so I went to take a class, typed in Photoshop. There's 20 listed, and the ones that are coming up, there's two next month. So Tuesdays or Thursdays, but at West City Campus. And then there's one, and those are Photoshop Tips and Tricks, Photoshop CS4 Advanced, and there's Adobe Photoshop Beginning that's here at North City on Wednesday with Instructor Howe. So we definitely offer Photoshop classes in a bunch of our campuses if you'd like to learn more about it. But at this point, let's say you've chosen your colors. Hopefully you, you don't choose my colors. Uh, choose some other colors even if it's a different shade of green. Um, and let's say you finish working on your graphic. Let's do this. We can go up to File Menu, Save for Web and Devices. Not Save or Save As, Save for Web and Devices. Or Handy Keyboard Shortcut, Alt, Control, Shift, S. So when you use Photoshop a lot, you can actually practice it, and you will be able to do it with one hand. So save for web and devices, and there's going to be a lot of options here, but the ones I recommend, um, basically at the very top left, there's presets. So here's where you can save into a variety of formats, but the one I recommend is the PNG ping 24 because it's a ping 24 and a ping 8. Select ping 24 and uh, we should note actually Amazon says for the small icon they want it ping with transparency, large icon ping with transparency, screenshots, portrait or landscape, promotional image, ping or JPEG, no transparency. So here, uh, our image, we're going to set up the preset ping 24 with transparency. Notice the dimensions are 512. So we can just select to, at the bottom, I can't see it. Does, that says save. And my icon's are getting cut off down there, but it says save, I think. We'll click save. Yeah. I'm going to save it over here, anything you want, but I'll just say uh, uh, LG image 512. It's my large image, that's 512 pixels. So I saved the image. It's in my folder now. There's the 512 pixel sized one. I'm going to reuse that same one for uh, the small image. So back in Photoshop, I'll do the same screen file, save for web. Make sure it's still ping 24 transparency. But down here I can say, on the fly, I can select, I can change this to say, to change to my small dimensions, which was what again? 114. So I can type here 114 and then press tab. So it's going to be 22.27%. But anyway, just type 114 on width, press tab, and then it'll give you the preview about that's how small it'll be. So the transparency is represented by the, the checkerboard pattern, because you can't show invisibility. 
uh, this will all be transparent, so that means that whatever background happens to be behind the image will show up there. If we did not have transparency, if I turn it off, it'll be a white background, which might look okay, but what if what's behind it is a red background? So it'll be red, and then suddenly a little sliver of white, and then your icon. As we keep transparency, it'll be all red behind it, wherever the picture is transparent. So 114 by 14, we'll save that, and I'll call this SM image 114. I've got my large image, my small image. I'm going to upload this to Amazon. nice. So my icon, my small image is being used here as a preview for my icon. The big one will be used elsewhere. Uh, I still want to make a, a couple of other assets, but I'm going to save it and we'll take a break in just a moment. But here I am putting together my store listing, the, the visual aspects of it. Technically at this point, I have the green check mark because I filled in the required items, but I still want to fill in like the promo image and such. We'll talk about that after the break. But I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer to have my, my app fully realized. So there's still a lot to do with respect to this phase in the app development. Maybe you thought again, okay, I'm going to make an app and I'm going to release it to the world. Great. No one knows about it. You're going to tell your friends and family perhaps, but not enough. So we'll, once we set up the app and all of this, we'll then also talk about the marketing and the promotion of it for free, of course. There's an aspect of it that you can pay for, but I'll be talking about the free stuff. I'll be showing you how to promote this on social media, social media that I recommend, tips and tricks and such, but we're getting closer. Uh, so hopefully, you know, we have today's meeting and then also um, Thursday's meeting. Hopefully, by the end of the full course, you know, you, you will be able to publish your version of this app because as I showed you for previous classes, Students did uh, did publish their own their own app. Everything that that you've learned, they've learned. Actually, you you guys have learned a little bit more. And um, their apps really are out there, out in the world, right there. So you don't want you want to be upstaged by that class. You want to do better, right? So uh, let's take a break. When we come back, I'll, I'll look at a couple of the other assets here, and then uh, we'll, we'll keep going. So uh, 7.20, we'll be back at 7.30.